and we're back on the Sports Max Zone. We begin with football. Early on Monday, round two of the English Premier League was completed with Manchester United hosting Liverpool at Old Trafford. That match ended 2-1. And of course, George and Lance, this is the talking point at the top of the show. The uh, result that many Manchester United fans would have waited on, uh, what surprised me is Fred was a substitute, Harry Maguire, Cristiano Ronaldo. So let me hear, you had a lot to say at the top of the show. This is your chance now. <laughs> you did a lot of talking with your hat. So yes, come yes, on, yes. talk now. Oh, no, it was, a, it, was a, it, was a, it was a very good performance. Um, there was nothing lucky about the win. There was nothing fluky about the win. It was good football played. The manager got the big calls right. Mm -hmm. First of all, he prepared the team very, very well. And then he picked the perfect team for this uh, encounter. He said in his pre-match press conference that to put pressure on Liverpool sufficient to cause them to crack, it needed energy. It needed pressing, high-octane pressing. And that's why he went, he said, with Rashford, Ilanga and Sancho. And they gave him that. They gave him what Anthony Martial, just recovering from the hamstring injury, uh, couldn't for 90 minutes just yet. And they, he, they gave him what Cristiano, at 37 years old, can't give him anymore. So that, that worked. Then in the midfield, he went with McTominay, still not the favorite player of Manchester United supporters, but he supported him with Bruno and Christian Eriksen. I thought Bruno Fernandes was one of our best players today, especially with how he used the ball. Usually he tries high risk passes, uh, high risk, high reward. He kept it a little bit simpler, a little bit more circumspect today, and it worked. It was a very good performance. At left back, I must mention uh, Tyrell Malassia, uh, the youngster who came over from Feyenoord in the summer. He was brilliant in the 1v1s against Mo Salah. There were two occasions, especially in the second half, where Mo Salah got by him, got wrong side him, and was racing towards the 18-yard box. And, as I've always said, the main weapon that a fullback has defending, especially in a one-on-one -on -one situation, is your recovery tackle, because wingers are going to get the better of you. Forwards are going to dribble by you, but do you have enough speed to, after you're beaten, to get back, snap back, and tackle? That's what Ashley Cole had, which made him very special. He former Arsenal and Chelsea left back. That's what Patrice ever had. That's what Luke Shaw doesn't have, and that's what so many fullbacks in the modern game do not have. If they're beaten, that's it. They're gone. Malassia had the speed to be beaten by Salah twice, but then get back and make the tackle to atone for being beaten. And I thought he had a very good game. Varane at, mid, at center, central defense, along with Martinez and De Gea, did, wasn't required to make any big saves just to do the basics right, which he didn't do against Brentford. So all in all, a good performance and the start of a long way back to respectability. Exactly what the Manchester United fans needed, Lance. Goals coming from Jaden Sancho and Marcus Rashford. What's your um, assessment of today's match? Well, as you mentioned, Sancho, I would say, suggest that the, the quality finish that he delivered to give the, Western, the um, Manchester United team the victory was uh, a, a moment that would have triggered a lot of confidence in the Man United um, game because... Um, usually in, in any sport, a moment of brilliance in a team sport is something that can just give an adrenaline rush to the entire team. And I thought Sancho's um, finish was sublime. Um, Malasio, I agree with George, played a real humdinger of a game um, at wing defence. And um, I think he has a bright future ahead of him. And uh, again, this is just early season. Three yes. matches gone for the season. I know Man United were the laughing stock of everyone. It's Liverpool who are now 16th in the table and uh, not Man United. Having said that, <laughs> there, I don't expect Liverpool to stay um, in a struggling position for too long. And uh, we expect that um, the Man United team will get a lot of confidence out of this result. And uh, beating Liverpool is always, especially in recent years, uh, something that is a target for Man United fans because Liverpool have been the better team yeah. for several years now. So I think this, this result for Man United is a is a very very good one and the hope from a manchester united standpoint is that they will move on from here yeah i have to say at this start of the morning you know i was saying that you know i would expect manchester united to find some sort of momentum against a liverpool team because i always sense that when manchester united comes up against uh, any of the big teams they find this sort of energy that you know is very difficult to combat 
despite saying all of that, are we to be concerned about Liverpool? Because Lance, you said there's 16th in the table. They're yet to get a win. Yes, it's three games, but this is not the type of football that we've been accustomed from Liverpool. Well, a stuttering start for Liverpool, but based on the quality of their roster, uh, this isn't a situation that I would think they would be overly worried about. But you don't want to start the season badly, not when you have teams like Manchester City and so on. You don't want to give them that much of a head start. Arsenal are playing very well also. So Liverpool fans, as far as their championship bid is concerned, would be a little bit worried about the, sh the stuttering start that they have had. But I think based on the quality of, of their roster, I expect them to get things right pretty soon and, you know, propel themselves up the table. George, do you get the sense that, you know, not having Darren Nunes impacted Liverpool's performance today? Luckily, Mo Salah was able to find the back of the net coming down to the end of the match. But you have been saying this for some time, that we shouldn't really be so worried about Manchester United. We should be concerned about Liverpool. So talk to me now. Well, Liverpool will be fine. Uh, if you looked at the Liverpool midfield today that started, Harvey Elliott, James Miller, Jordan Henderson... Liverpool's strongest midfield doesn't have guaranteed two of those. They, they may play Jordan Henderson, who I believe is the luckiest footballer in the world. It shows how good Liverpool is that they can carry that passenger every game and still be as awesome as they've been. So when everybody's fit, Harvey Elliott doesn't start. When everybody's fit, uh, James Miller doesn't start. Yeah? And uh, you spoke about the fact that Nunes wasn't there. I mean, Nunes is still to prove himself in the Liverpool shirt. This, the team... He's not been there long enough to influence games to the extent that you can say the team misses him. They miss him potentially with what he can bring. They miss Mane because Mane was a part of the system for so long. But they don't miss Nunes yet because this team is still getting used to Nunes and he to them. So I think it's just the injuries today which robbed Liverpool of their usual uh, midfield mastery, control of the game. You didn't see that today, but that's just down to injuries. Liverpool will be fine when the big players get fit again. And of course, when Klopp doesn't have cause to uh, start Fabinho, to sit Fabinho on the bench to start the game. Naby Keita also not available. So there are many parts of the Liverpool team that weren't up to their usual strength. But by the time we reach week 10, they'll be up and running. They'll be flying and uh, they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll be challenging for this competition. But that said, mm -hmm. you know, I was trying to look at the games. I watched as many games as I could this weekend. Usually I just watch select games. I try to watch as many as possible. And I've said to myself, do I see a team that is potentially so much stronger than the others that if they get everything right, they could go on and win? The obvious thing to say is that Man City and Liverpool are those teams. I don't think so this season. I don't know who will win, although that's a statement that should be, prefaced, that should be uh, contextualized by the fact that it's so early. You can't talk about who's going to win this Premier League. There was a two seasons ago, Man City were, after 14 games, way down in the table and then they recovered to win. So, you know, we've seen it all before. I'm just saying that this Premier League is going to be real competitive. Which other big league in the, in the, in the world? Fulham stuffs Chelsea 3-0. Newcastle come within a whisker of beating City, held, hold them to a three-all draw. Mm -hmm. Man United, who in wretched form, they say it's the crisis, the worst run club in the world, beats Liverpool, and it's not a lucky victory. And so many results in one round, it just doesn't happen anywhere else. And that's why the, 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 the Premier League is so popular around the world, because of the competitive nature of it. Yeah, and speaking about the results, let's take a look now at the full list of results from round two in the EPL. So we have that draw that we spoke about between Newcastle and Manchester City, 3-3. Leeds were able to beat Chelsea 3-0. Brighton overcame West Ham 2-0. Then Arsenal with a 3-0 victory over Bournemouth. Crystal Palace beat Aston Villa 3-1. Then a 1-0 draw between Everton and Nottingham. Fulham overcame Brentford. Uh, Southampton, they were able to beat Leicester 2-1. And Tottenham scraping that 1-0 win, which was a big scrape over Wolves. So, George, Arsenal supporters are very happy and are starting to dream of winning the Premier League. Very good start by them. You have to give them that. The team looked good from pre-season. They really, really were ticking over. Uh, they have so many impressive individuals in the team. The difference with the Arsenal team to some teams, the Arsenal outstanding individuals are individuals whose stock in football is rising. Odegaard's stock is still rising, even though he came on the scene as a world-beating 15-year-old and Real Madrid signed him. But he, he was all promise. Now he's looking to live up to the promise that he displayed uh, when he was signed by Real Madrid. So he's rising. 
the player who I love the most at Arsenal, Gabriel Martinelli, his stocks are also rising. Saka is a rising force. Jesus is a man with something to prove, trying to prove to Pep Guardiola and others that, look, you didn't use me properly. You didn't build a system for me. I really can finish top scorer in the Premier League if you gave me a chance. William Saliba, a centre-half who would believe that he can establish himself as one of the best players in the league. So you have a group of youngsters at Arsenal who all are very ambitious. There's nobody there with any laurels to rest on. There's not a single player in that Arsenal squad, not even Gabriel Jesus, who have enough chips in the bucket to say, you know what, I can coast from here on in and my career will be legendary. Nobody. That is the great thing for a manager to have. And when you have a manager who knows that all his players are hungry, all of them have something to prove, game in, game out, and you put them together as a unit, you're going to get the early performances that you're going to get. But again, it's early. But when people say it's early, some people say it's early to try to deflate you feeling good about your team. That's the wrong way to look at it. Even, though, even, even in the same way it is wrong to think that early season good form means abiding season form. Mm -hmm. Everybody would want to be like Arsenal, unbeaten after three games, winning all three games and scoring as many goals and scoring as freely as, as, as they have done. So congratulations to them and for the Gunners' sake, long may it continue because they've suffered a lot. Yeah, they've mm. definitely suffered a lot. Yeah, I, would, I, I want to add to that, that for the Arsenal fans, the Arteta issue is something that they would feel some level of gratification about at the moment because he has gone through a couple of years of real pressure because there were even some Arsenal fans who I, I thought didn't think that he was the right man for the job. And uh, given what we are seeing now, you'd have to say that the club's faith in Arteta in rebuilding them is beginning to bear some fruit and um, Arsenal are looking pretty strong at the moment. Yeah, well, what about Chelsea now? Chelsea's manager, Thomas Tuchel, blamed the boss for his team's embarrassing 3-0 away defeat to Leeds. Tuchel said, It started yesterday. We had no plane to arrive, so we came on the bus. The players could fly, but for the coaching staff, it was a long ride on the bus. It continued today. Is Tuchel whining, Lance? Mm, it sounds that way to me. <laughs> it sounds he that said way to the me. players could fly. That, that's, that's the part I don't get. The players could fly, but mm. for the coaching staff, it's a long way on the bus. Mm. I think Tuchel is struggling. Um, coming out of that result and trying to um, explain what, what went wrong for Chelsea, but the team just played badly and were, were heavily beaten. I, I quite frankly don't buy those post-game post comments. George, what say you about that? Does he need a communication manager? He was very ungracious in the post-match uh, segment. Um, he should have congratulated Leeds for outworking his team, for out-hustling them and for showing greater quality in the attacking third, which is where the, the game was won. But rather oddly, he chose not to do that. I, I find it... I, I can't accept when a manager loses a football game and you don't acknowledge that the other team played better than you, especially George, when they did. thank yeah? God he didn't hit the man or try to well, do well, anything. Well, well, there you go. Well, they would have had a real <laughs> fight because Jesse Marsh is one of those uh, brash Americans who would not love nothing more than to be tackled like that by, by a fellow <laughs> manager. Uh, so thank God Tuchel didn't do that. But he was very ungracious. In watching the game, I watched every minute of that game, Leeds outplayed Chelsea. And the thing is this, though, when, by the time Leeds were 2-0 up, it wasn't that Chelsea were playing badly. Leeds were just playing better. And the energy and the pressing and the crowd at Ellen Road, everything combined. Yeah. And then Koulibaly, I mean, a professional fall, he had to make the tackle that he did. He was on a yellow card already, red card. So it just all fell apart at the end. But I thought Leeds were better than them in almost all departments. And Chelsea started off solidly. But as the game went on, Leeds improved themselves on the game and they were like a rash all over Chelsea and, 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 I, and I, I, just, I just believe that Tuka should have been gracious to say well look we lost this one we, got, we have to wheel and come again mm -hmm. rather than plucking for silly excuses it, 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 it's undignified yeah I thought so as well now let's what do we make of the defending champions Manchester City and that draw with Newcastle what I will say is based on what I saw for that first half, even coming into the second half, Manchester City genuinely had to work really, really, really hard against the Newcastle team. It was a very good game of football, I can tell you that. For the neutrals, it was very good stuff. Alan San Maxima was unplayable yeah. up to about minute 75 when he started to run out of steam. I mean, Kyle Walker is the fastest right back in the league. Mm -hmm. And he had Kyle Walker on roller skates. Mm -hmm. And 
everywhere in the Newcastle team, it was just dripping with quality. Miguel Almiron was running like a man possessed. Uh, Bruno Guimaraes was also at, 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 at the races. And Callum Wilson's finish was very, very good for that, for that goal to, to put them 2-0 up uh, for, for the second goal for Newcastle. And then City inevitably came back. Kevin De Bruyne, there's a, the, the, the pass that Kevin De Bruyne made for the, was it the Silver. third goal? Silver. The Silver, Silver, Silver David Silver goal. The, Bernardo on, on the replay, yes. the commentators didn't get what he wanted to do. Yeah. Lance, Mariah, the ball was played and there was a runner wide. And you know, of course, you're, you're, you're the viewer, spectator, so you're seeing the big screen on TV. You're seeing what, what most players don't see because of the panoramic view almost that you have. Yes. So everyone with sense would have expected the ball to be played out to the runner wide who was running into the penalty box on the blind side of the defender. I was saying, that's the pass. And at the last moment, I noticed Bernardo at the top inside the 18 yard box, and De Bruyne shaped as if he was going to go wide. And it was just a straight. That was a brilliant pass. Shows the man's quality. <laughs> so it was an excellent game of football. And you're going to have results like these Newcastle, mm. even when they are floundering in the league, the big teams, the boys with the biggest reputations, go to St. James's Park, and it's hard. 3-3 at Newcastle, I think Pep, Pep doesn't have anything to complain about. Mm. He won a point. I don't think he lost two. Mm. No, but well, he it, really it showed, it showed quality and character as champions, as yeah, champions Manchester City did. And, and De Bruyne, I know, I know George has a problem with De Bruyne in the biggest moments that is true. on the biggest stages. Especially the Champions but League. But there, there's no question De Bruyne is a high-class player. Yeah, high he's class been doing player. really well for me. On that note, team, let's take a break and we come right back.